This man has 39 wives and 94 children, learn his story. Mizoram Zayana is just like any other dad on this earth, he cooks, he cares for his children, he tends to his garden and house, he is truly a family man. The only difference between him and every other father in this world is that he has 180 people in his immediate family. That's 39 wives, 94 children, 14 daughters-in-law, and 33 grandchildren. All stemming from one man. Continue reading to learn his story. Mizoram lives in Batong Tlangnuam village in the Sirchip district in India and is said to be the head of the world's largest family. The family all lives in the same location, and basically under the same roof, which can prove difficult, as you would imagine. Unsurprisingly, religion comes into play with this tale. Zayana was born into a religious family, with his father founding his own Christian subfaith called Chana Paul. Originally the faith was named Kwanchuaha Paul after Zayana's father, but proving to be a mouthful for his followers, he simplified the name to Chana. Kwantuaha actually started Chana in Hmawankan, a village which was a short distance Batog, but he was forcibly evicted by the village headman because he felt his faith was dangerous. According to Chana followers, the origin of Chana Paul is rooting in chapter 20 of the Book of Revelation, the 1000 years Jesus Christ spent on earth. Its largest religious festival is Bokt Kut, or Festival of the Hut. The festival takes place on June 12th every year to celebrate the founding of the faith. As you could guess, polygamy is formally encouraged by Chana's followers. Oddly enough, the religion isn't a very widespread one, with only 2,000 followers total. You would think with 38 wives, Zayana seeks out women to marry, but it's actually the exact opposite. Women seek him out because they see him as an avenue to a better life. The area Zayana is from is notoriously impoverished, and the financial security that he provides is enough of a reason to jump ship with him. Unlike some of the more sinister religious sects in the world, members of Chana are allowed to speak about the religion to outsiders. His wife Rinkmini says that she wasn't forced to marry Zayana, but that he began to pursue her when they were both out for a morning walk. They would often cross paths after their first meeting, and when Zayana eventually asked for her hand in marriage, she happily agreed. He is the most handsome person in the village, she told the Daily Mail in an interview. You might be wondering if the Indian government objects to Chana Paul in the way that America government has rejected polygamous cults in the past, but the fact of the matter is that the family members act as model citizens. The local minister of rural development said, they're very good craftsmen and very enterprising. They're also reputed to be honest. While the majority of people could do without 38 spouses, Zayana says that, today I feel like God's special child. He's given me so many people to look after. His followers are also happy with the situation, with C. Lauringthanga, whose daughter is married to Zayana, says that the family, diligently practices the values the gospel tells us, like honesty, hard work, helping the neighbors, simplicity, and equality. Zayana considers himself a lucky man to have such a large family, but he admits that it can be a bit endearing at times. If you have a family of five or six, you can sometimes get by by winging it, but when you are managing 180 people under one roof, there are a lot of day-to-day -day logistics one needs to take into account. This management requires strict routines, and some of the children have gone on record saying that the home sometimes feels more like a military operation than a home. The family's two managers are Zayana himself and his first wife Zathayangai. Their mornings start with getting up before everyone else and determining what work needs to be done that day. Once they've agreed on the nitty-gritty, the other wives are then summoned and given their instructions for the day. Everyone is involved in ensuring the home runs smoothly and in a way that is beneficial to everyone. The homestead is in a very rural area of India, so they like to get an early start on the day. Most days the family will be out of bed and starting their day by 5.50 am. Every morning the family does a group prayer to start their day, and they work until the sun goes down, which is when they have a large communal meal. As you could imagine, feeding 180 people is no small task. On any given night, Zayana's household can consume 100 pounds of rice, 44 pounds of pulses, and up to 77 pounds of meat. Imagine ordering 77 pounds of beef at the butcher. All this cooking takes a lot of effort, and the cleanup is just as difficult. Luckily there is a small army to help cook and clean every night. The family really does live under one room, which is something that is still hard to believe. The family has built their own home into the mountainside by their village. Standing at four stories tall with over 100 rooms inside, 
The house is definitely a feat although when you look at it, the house would probably not pass most building codes if it was built anywhere else. Interesting enough, the wives don't get their own rooms, but instead share communal rooms. Outsiders think this is to encourage bonding among the wives. The wives' communal bedrooms are essentially barracks, long rooms outfitted with rows of beds. As you might expect as head of the household, Zayana has his own bedroom, with a single double bed. And you might be wondering, if there are 38 wives, only one double bed, and one man, how does Zayana do the do? Well the family has actually produced a schedule for the wives, with each wife getting a scheduled week for bedroom time with Zayana. The wives insist that by this arrangement, none of the wives get jealous of each other. Each wife is numbered upon arrival into the family, but apart from the first wife who helps in chore allocation, everyone is considered an equal. Lalruwait Kamai, who is wife 18, says, every wife, save for the postmenopause lot, gets to spend a week in P.U. Zayana's room. During this period, she takes care of all his needs. All of his needs. We will leave that one up to your imagination. While everything so far seems pretty egalitarian, there is one aspect to living in the household that suggests that might not entirely be true. In the wives' sleeping quarters, their beds are arranged by the wife's age, with the youngest position closest to Zayana's room, and the oldest the furthest. While the wives have assured outsiders that this is just merely a form of organization, it seems like there is some underlying pecking order. While all of the wives bear children, the duty of caring for the child is usually given to the oldest women in the family. And after collectively caring for 110 newborns, they might know a thing or two about caring for children. Surprisingly, this isn't an odd practice in rural India. Oftentimes the younger parents will delegate the majority of the child-raising duties to their grandparents so they can go work and provide for the family. If you think amateur midwifery sounds like a bad idea, the family would beg to differ. As a matter of fact, they think that they might have more experience than the doctors in the area. One of Zayana's sons, Parlayana, spoke to the Times of India to say, we don't need any nurses or doctors at childbirth. Our womenfolk have enough experience and no woman in this house has suffered from any sort of complications during or after delivery. One of the main reasons Chana Paul is respected by those around them is their hard work and dedication. The family prides themselves on self-sufficiency, and while household chores are large part of the day-to-day, -day, the family also runs multiple farms and its own school. All of the food consumed by the family is grown by them, and the children are educated by the family. Zayana values education, and while religious studies are a part of the curriculum, it only accounts for about 20% of their teachings. Zayana ultimately wants his children to be successful in the world, and he knows how important smarts are. Zayana, now in his 70s and as healthy as he can be, is wanting to add some more wives to his family in the coming years. He is quite interested in adding someone more exotic to the family, and might venture to the US to find her. They are part of Ripley's Believe It or Not.